I'm Chance. And I'm Sarah Catherine. And this is Conservation Connection. Presented by Last Chance Endeavors. We are a husband and wife team running a wildlife education nonprofit. It's focused on connecting students to their environment. Each week here on Conservation Connection, we do just that. Introducing you to the groundbreaking science and conservation work that's happening every day across the globe. We talk to professionals in the world of conservation science and wildlife management, and we ask them about their career, their current projects, their wild and crazy stories from the field, and everything in between. This episode is a collaboration with EarthX here in Dallas, Texas. EarthX is the largest Earth Day celebration in the world, and it brings in speakers from every corner of the environmental arena. Listen in to hear the stories of today's environmental titans, covering everything from environmental law, ocean health, renewable energy, clean transportation, and so much more. Let's get to the show. Welcome to another episode of Conservation Connection. We're here in Dallas at the EarthX conference in April. We're really excited because we are sitting down with Erica Bieland. She is the program development specialist for the Rural Renewable Energy Alliance, or REAL. She coordinates a lot of the education and community outreach that they've got going on. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. We're super happy to have you here. I'm glad you could fit us into your schedule. We appreciate it. Could you start with telling us about what Rural Renewable Energy Alliance does? Sure. Yeah. So real. I'll just start using that because it'll be easier. <laughs> Perfect. Now that we have that covered. <laughs> yeah. Real is a nonprofit in rural Minnesota that focuses on making solar energy accessible to everyone. So we have two main programs. One of them is to install solar arrays in partnership with low income families and communities to reduce energy costs. Um, and the other one that I work a lot on is our education and community outreach program that works with schools and communities to share about solar in general. So how did you get into this? What got you into the renewable energy arena? Yeah, I kind of just, I studied environmental studies and I heard Real installed a solar array at my school. And then I heard about an AmeriCorps VISTA program that Real was hosting, which is a year-long program, and I just on a whim went and did it. <laughs> Didn't make very much money my first year, but that's not what it's about. It's about the mission of it, and so I went and joined the team, and then I stayed on afterward. So I've been in the renewable energy sector since, and what I really liked about Real is that it combined environmental side of things with solar and reducing emissions, but then also the human side of things and making solar accessible to everyone and education accessible to everyone. So working with communities and right. not just the tech side of things, but the whole implementation side of things. Right. Yeah. The community aspect was really exciting. So growing up, did you always know you wanted to go kind of into the green field or was there like an <laughs> event that happened where you're like, oh man, environmentalism is awesome. Go back even further than undergrad and see what lays there. Sure. I don't think I ever I had like one of those epiphany things where like, this is what I'm going to do. But I grew up in actually rural northeast Iowa in a really pretty part of Iowa. It's not just the cornfields, <laughs> even though I love the cornfields. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a, I got a lot of bluffs and hills. And so I, I grew up really close to natural surroundings. And the community that I grew up in was also really supportive of a lot of environmental things. And I always wanted to be a vet growing up. So I guess it makes sense that I ended up studying environmental studies when I went to school. But I didn't have the epiphany of anything, but it just kind of made sense. And I think especially being a young, young person, we've learned so much about climate change growing up as well, more than past generations, that it also is just something that makes sense that we should care about. Yeah. Absolutely. So could you tell us why is solar energy important? Yeah, I think solar plays an important role in, especially with my organization as a renewable energy source in reducing emissions, um, but also a source that can be more accessible to residential areas and homes and also communities. So oftentimes wind turbines are really huge and we need wind, but solar is a way to kind of have more access on your house or in your community with a community solar garden. And I think that's a really cool aspect of solar. 
Yeah. Everywhere has sun. So <laughs> I, I was going to say, everybody has sun shining on, you know, if you're living somewhere, sunshine hits it at some point, you know, which is n- not everybody has oil reserves in their backyard. Not everybody has space for a wind turbine or the kind of wind flow that's needed to make that viable. But everybody gets sun. Yeah. So it's one of the few renewable energy sources that's really completely accessible to anybody. And it takes a lot of education to let people know that it's a resource that they can rely on. Part of what Real does is your goal is to make this accessible to people who maybe think it isn't accessible to them or that they can't afford to have solar energy, correct? Right. Yeah. So this is one of my favorite parts of my job because solar is expensive in a lot of places and it leaves people out. People, a lot of low income families end up spending, you know, 20 or 30 percent of their annual income on energy costs. We all pay the same amount for energy, but when you have a lower income, it ends up being more of your bill. So it's kind of a cool way of being able to choose clean energy and partnering with us to install solar arrays with communities. So we've done some community solar arrays that are connected to the federal energy assistance program that serves low-income families. And uh, we've also partnered with Habitat for Humanity in making, even after you have an affordable home, your costs of energy still still are there. So we've partnered with Habitat. And then we've we've started some international work as well. It's a whole different game in other parts of the world. So we've been in Liberia, in Uganda, in Zambia, and installing microgrids in, in places that often don't even have access to electricity, which is something we totally take for granted here yeah. in the US. So. 100%. So correct me if I'm wrong, the story here is that Rather than having low-income families purchase energy through the traditional power grid, you're encouraging them and making it possible for them to install solar arrays so that they're producing their own energy rather than purchasing it from an outside source. Is that right? Yeah, making it more affordable. I mean, still often people are still connected to the electric grid, so still paying money to utilities, but solar and renewable energy is a way to help reduce those costs so that people don't have to pay as much as they do. It's kind of like having a garden in your backyard where you grow a little bit of produce. It's not going to be your entire food in food stream, but it helps alleviate some of the the food that you're having to buy at the grocery store. So you're able to kind of be your own producer, at least to, to some extent. Yeah, right. Local renewable energy on your house. Yeah. That's awesome. (laughs) How do you get the word out there? Because I know myself, at least, you know, I think solar panels, like, that's really cool. But gosh, they're so expensive. Like, I would love to have solar panels on my house or at my house to create the energy that I'm using. But it just seems just so expensive and hard to get to. I wouldn't even know where to start with that. So how do you go about educating the public? Yeah, I think working with the low-income families that we do, we already work with existing infrastructure that works with low-income families. So the Federal Energy Assistance Program already identifies people that maybe are paying a lot for their energy bills. So we partner with them and with Habitat, who already has is connected with people that might benefit from a solar array as well. So we've we've been, as far as the low-income side of things, that's how we've been connecting with people. In Zambia and Liberia, the need is just so great that we just keep getting applications in all the time. So (laughs) there's no need to worry about that there. But as far as just general public and sharing more about solar and how it works and the costs, it's just just talking to local communities, I think, and talking about ways that might be able to help finance and what solar costs actually are. There's incentives. It's really the renewable energy sector is state by state in some ways. There's some federal incentives, but there's state by state incentives that make it more accessible to people. So just going out in the community and sharing it. Yeah. So being at community events, kind of like EarthX, you know, the the fact that you're here being just educating members of the public at events like this. I'm sort of imagining somebody in like a solar panel costume dancing around (laughs) talking about the importance of it, which is probably ridiculous. But maybe, you know, if you look into that, I want want credit for that idea. (laughs) Um, I'd be for that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So Real is obviously is working internationally, but you said it's kind of a state by state basis here in the U.S. So are you working in kind of all 50 states or do you have areas of focus or are you completely national? 
Yeah. Working with the Energy Assistance Program, our models for community solar are definitely scalable across the U.S. We were part of the Department of Energy Solar in Your Community Challenge, which is specifically focused on low-income solar. And we expanded to Vermont and did a project there. We've also done some other projects in other Midwestern states. But mostly we've been working a lot in Minnesota. It's been our primary focus. But it'd be awesome to go further in the U.S. (laughs) I have full faith that you guys will. I can't wait to see when Real is a household name. Yeah, thanks. (laughs) Absolutely. Now, when I think of energy, I kind of think it's a male-dominated field. Do you see that in the renewable energy field as well? Yeah, definitely. (laughs) It's kind of funny because kids can always tell us what's actually out there. So I was at a education outreach. We we do a lot of solar outreach in schools in our area as well. And one of the kids, I went with one of my coworkers who's also female, and we were doing a presentation about solar. And the kid said, what? You're with a solar company? I thought you'd be boys, (laughs) (laughs) which is kind of funny because it is true. It's most of the, my boss likes to say, most of the renewable energy sector is pale, stale, and male, (laughs) 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 which is, which is kind of funny. But uh, I think a lot of, we're in rural Minnesota. So a lot of it is connecting with our communities and trying to make opportunities for communities that aren't traditionally part of the renewable energy sector. So yeah, it is definitely male dominated at the time, but it'll be exciting to see where it goes in the future. So you brought up that you're going into schools and and working with kids. And we love that, you know, Last Chance Endeavors is really focused on working with students because at that early age, you can set them up for life to be aware of what's out there and, and ways that they can make a difference. So let's get into the nitty gritty of it. What are some of the programs and activities that you're doing in these schools? And, and what's the main focus of that? Yeah, so we just started a really cool project in our local rural community of installing solar arrays in partnership with the schools, which is really cool because in rural Minnesota, we're usually the last ones to see something like that. You know, it's cities first, so it's really exciting to have the solar there. And then part of that, we're also having energy curriculum. So going into the schools and talking about solar energy because kids are going to be making energy choices in the future. So they're they're the future of everything. And that's going into school is one of my favorite parts of what I do and talking to kids about energy. And one really cool thing is that we have these little solar robots and they have basically solar has no moving parts. So it's kind of exciting to have something that moves when you actually see the solar working. It's hard to be excited about a solar panel just laying there, but when it's making a car fly across the room, that's pretty cool. Right. Yeah. So it's, yeah, because it looks kind of boring. It's like, this is creating electricity, but you can't see it. (laughs) It's definitely a really engaging way to look at, you know, energy is such a energetic topic, right? You know, when we're talking about energy, it's what does energy help us do? It's our electricity. It's how we move our cars. It's everything. Uh, And so being able to show how it goes from the source of all energy on earth, the sun, into doing what you want it to do, move a car or, you know, whatever that is, is a a really cool connection to be able to make with students. Something that I, I wanted to come back to is Sarah Catherine and I both have kind of communication education backgrounds a little bit. And for me personally, a big part of why I got into education and communication is because your boots on the ground, talking to kids, making a difference and and really being a, a force in their lives. And I can think back to tons of programs that I've done where I had a student who was really interested in asking great questions and stuff like that. And you get to firsthand see those eye opening moments. Do you have any any anecdotes, any experiences you've had in schools where you got to see a connection being made, someone really figuring out what's happening, anything like that? Yeah, I actually have a really awesome example from Earth Day last week. I, we were at an Earth Day festival, and this girl was there with her parents volunteering, and she just came up to me. She's like, can I volunteer with you guys? I was like, sure, because uh-huh. we had the solar cars, and we were getting some traffic because it's cool because it moves. <laughs> <laughs> and she came up, and she's, she just started. Um, she said, I've learned a lot about wind in school, but I haven't learned that much about solar. Like, does this reduce pollution too? And I was like, it does. And so then she started, I kind of showed her what I usually say to people when they come to the booth. And she just started taking over the booth basically and telling people like 
these are solar panels, they reduce energy costs, and like it reduces pollution, and all of this really cool stuff about solar energy that, and then she just kept asking questions as we kept going about like, so how does this work? And then I was like, well, I kind of explained like photons and how they move and everything. She's just like, <laughs> when I get really hyper, when I have sugar, that's like, I'm moving around. And I was like, yeah, it's kind of like that. So that was a super cool, like one-on-one -on -one connection with her that was really exciting and then she started teaching people and I think that's something that's really cool about education is that once you do kind of get that spark with somebody then the, they pass it on and they get excited so absolutely what a, what an awesome experience I do want to warn you though watch out because it sounds like she's coming for your job so. <laughs> she asked me that at the end <laughs> not that she was coming for it she's like can I work for you and I was like well you're in third grade maybe sometime in the future <laughs> here's my business card have yeah. people call my people oh man I love that and I think it's really funny especially at events like that because but if she was in third grade, it's probably a little different. But when you see people a little older who are excited like that and they're asking you questions and then they're communicating it with the public and then the person they're talking to is like, oh, do you work for them? And they're like, no, I just – this is really interesting to me. It kind of makes – the other people down the line who hear about it from them go, oh, well, like, you know, I think people can sometimes be a little skeptical <laughs> of companies that have a product that they're trying to get out there. But when it comes from someone down the line who doesn't work for that company, they're like, oh, OK, so this really is cool. It's really authentic. It's grassroots. And that's a really cool thing to see. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think we're seeing even more of that as solar starts to go on more rooftops. People are just seeing it more and asking those questions more and are like, oh, maybe this is something I can do too. So it's, yeah, it's cool. That's yeah. pretty great. Yeah. It's either when we were driving from Georgia to Charleston or from Georgia up to Pennsylvania, I remember we went by this field that had just a ton of solar panels in it. And I love seeing that. It's just kind of a sign of the times that hopefully it's going to be a bigger and better thing. And I think that we need to accelerate as much as we can because we're at a, you know, we're in a 10 year stage where we have to make some major radical changes to our energy consumption, where energy comes from. And that has to happen fast, like now, not 30 years from now, now. And as much as, yes, the wheels turn slowly, it's kind of all of our jobs to help those wheels turn as fast as they can and, and be proponents of investing and being on the front edge of environmental change. Yeah, definitely. So what do you do in your day-to-day -day life that helps the environment? Yeah, I think something that I really love doing is being part of community groups that are really involved with environmental initiatives. It really kind of back to that education thing of just talking to people and what they're passionate about and connecting all of them together because it's going to take everything all at once to solve the big problems that we have. So I've, I've been involved in some community groups and in our local small community that are working toward environmental initiatives and have community gardens and putting up solar panels in little community spaces. And that's been really exciting. And I think things like that are what are going to start making even bigger changes as we keep going. Definitely, we need the policy initiatives, but it's, like I said, everything all at once. <laughs> right. You got you to gotta work from all angles. And one of the things that I really like about kind of the work that Real is doing and, and what you do in your daily life is that there's this community aspect that it's we are all people living in this area. We are all connected to one another and acknowledging that and leveraging that to bring about change. I think over the last couple of decades, there's been this real sense of isolationism between people with social media and, and the rise of digital communication. I know personally, I would much rather text somebody than be on a phone call with them. It, it's a more convenient way, but it's also such a less personal communication. And so to have initiatives that are doing community based things that bring people together, talking to neighbors all in one area, that's really powerful. And I think it's a, a really important thing to keep people connected to one another. Yeah, I think that's a cool thing about community solar, the, it's the same idea as like a community garden is that we have these arrays because not everyone has an awesome house for solar. There's the best conditions that make a house good. So, but community solar gardens are a cool central spot often where you have solar there. And then with our initiative, it's serving more low-income families in the community. And it's kind of just like a thought piece and then community centers where people can see solar and be connected to it in that way and impacts more people, which is cool too. 
If people wanted to learn more about Real or get involved with your organization, where could they find that and how could they do that? Sure. I think the best way would go to our website at real.org. That's two R's, so www.rreal.org. Um, and also our Facebook page is pretty active as well. Awesome. Well, we'll put a link to that in the show notes uh, so that anybody listening, if you guys want to check out some of the awesome work that Real is doing, just scroll down, click on those notes, and, and uh, you'll see a link to learn more information. Thank you so much for being on the show with us today. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening to this episode of Conservation Connection. If you enjoyed our podcast, go ahead and subscribe to make sure you catch every episode that we post. We'd love to hear from you. So if you want to reach out, go to our website, lastchanceendeavors.com backslash contact and shoot us an email. We love questions from our listeners. So if you heard something that you want to know more about, be sure to let us know. If you've got a minute to spare, leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts will help other conservation-minded people find the show. We'd really appreciate it. A big thanks to the people working to protect our planet, and a big thanks to you for listening. Don't forget to tune in next week.